Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So about seven months ago, I got approached about reviewing a new line of wines from the Ron Rubin Winery. They're part of their Blue Bin series, a set of wines in plastic bottles. Wait, what? Plastic bottles? Now these are their killer. Yeah, plastic bottles. Before I get into what these are and why, I'll catch you up on the winery itself. Now I've reviewed the wines in the past, so check out those episodes for the fuller version of the backstory. But here's a short version. Ron has been part of the beverage industry for a very long time. He started with the family business, Central Wholesale Liquor Company, in the early 1970s. Eventually, he worked for Clearly Canadian Sparkling Water. I remember them. I used to drink them all the time. And then bought Republic of Tea. By the way, Clearly Canadian is still around. Anyway, after that, he bought River Road Family Vineyards and Winery in the Green Valley of the Russian River Valley. Now, what's up with the plastic bottles? Well, when we think of environmentally friendly, plastic probably isn't on the top of your list. It's a petroleum product, so it can seem to go against the idea of having any benefit to the environment. But this is where we need to remember that, honestly, in my opinion, we need to have, we need to strike a balance, okay? So the Ron Rubin Company is a certified B Corporation or certified B Corp company. As of the date of this script, 32724, the River Road Family Vineyards and Winery, that's the official name of the winery, is one of 45 certified B Corp wineries in the world. Getting this certification is, in many ways, much harder than other kinds of sustainable certifications. So... To become one in any industry is a pretty big deal. Now, in addition to this certification, they are also SIP certified and a certified California sustainable vineyard and winery. Links to all of this below. So what's up with the plastic again, all right? Why? Why are we doing this? Well, for one, these bottles are made from 100% recycled plastic. So no new plastic. Plus they are 100% recyclable. While pretty much all plastic can technically be recycled, um, not all of them are. And most of the time, it's about how practical it is to do it. The kind of plastic here used is PET, or polyethylene terephthalate. I think I messed it up, but that's the closest I'm going to get. Anyway, yeah, that's a mouthful. Anyway, PET, or PET, is one of the most recyclable plastics out there. Now, in this case, they also add a thin glass liner. Well, it's not technically glass. It's silicon oxide or psyox. Glass has silicon dioxide. It's a very slight difference, but the important part is that psyox has a glass-like impermeability to PET or PET. It's a material called Plasmax made by Amcor. PET on its own has very good to excellent low permeability of oxygen and other gases, but it's not as good as um, it's not as good as aluminum or glass, my script said plastic for some reason, as in effectively zero. So glass and, and aluminum really don't have any gla uh, a gas permeability. With this liner, you can have the same level as glass for at least 12 months and probably longer. I found a webpage talking about a study with beer showing no oxygen ingress for six months and 12 months. I got a lot of links below about all of this if you want more info. The reason I went to all this trouble is that plastic does allow transfer of gases both directions. And while PET is one of the most used plastics for beverage containers, it's not glass. My somewhat recent experience with bag in a box wine that was oxidized is why I wanted to know more. Besides the fact that it could take over a year for someone to consume a bottle of wine from the time it's bottled. I've had these bottles for about seven months. All right, so. The reality is when we buy wine as a society, we usually drink it the same day. So it's not even just that you may have a bottle of wine in your home for a long time. It could be sitting on the shelf or, you know, and then go to your house. So my concern was 
yes, these are, these actually, I can't remember, are they vintage wines? <laughs> yes, they're vintage wines. Um, while they are vintage wines, just because it's a vintage wine doesn't mean they sell all the, the winery and or your retailer or even maybe your restaurant sells through that entire vintage in a 12-month period of time. It is absolutely conceivable that a wine may sit in a retail shop or sit in a restaurant for more than one or two years, so they may skip vintages when it's time to reorder, if they even reorder. Now, the fact that they are clear also brings up light strike in wine. Wine is more impervious to this than beer for a lot of reasons that aren't important right now but green and brown glass is better overall. This is really for the long term and wines like these are meant to be consumed quickly, so clear plastic or glass shouldn't matter. Plenty of white and rosé bottles are bottled in clear glass, or wines are bottled in clear glass. Okay, the big benefit here actually is, besides being recyclable, is weight. At 52 grams or 1.83 ounces, it's 10 to 16 times lighter than glass. That's a significant savings in weight, carbon emissions, and honestly, shipping costs. It's not just shipping the, to the consumer, but also to and well from the winery. In addition to this, glass bottles account for 30% of a wine's carbon footprint. This is the single biggest factor for wine. Not only that, only 30% of wine bottles in the U.S. are recycled. So there are a lot of reasons to look into plastics for wine especially wines that are meant to be consumed quickly and won't be on the shelf for a long time, as in, you know, more than a year or two. Okay, now that I got all those deets out of the way, what about the wines? Well, today I'm doing two of the wines. I have four total, a Pinot Grigio and a Sauvignon Blanc. And well, that's really it. The sustainability is the real story here. Also, the name Bluebin, well, you might have guessed, I didn't guess, so I looked at the website, that it's from the blue recycle bins outside people's homes. Okay, depending on where you live in the country, not every recycle bin or whatever has blue. Um, in my neighborhood, it's still a brown bin, but it has a green top, okay? All right, so let's get the stats for these wines. First up, the 2022 Blue Bin Pinot Grigio. Suggested retail price, about $15. California, it's from California. Pinot Grigio is the grape, probably 100%. Uh, certified green, as in Certified California Sustainable Vineyard and Winery. It is SIP certified, Certified B Corporation. The ABV is 12.5%. The 2022 Blue Bin Sauvignon Blanc, also suggested retail price $15. These wines are what we call line priced, so they should also be uh, the same retail price across the board. Also from California, Sauvignon Blanc, probably 100%. Certified Green, which is a Certified California Sustainable Vineyard and Winery. SIP Certified, Certified B Corporation, ABV 12.5%. One additional observation, these are not uh, appellated wines, as in they just say California and not an AVA. Not a big deal as the vineyards they are coming from also have to meet all sustainable requirements. All right, now let's get into the wines as I look to make sure I started everything. Um, so first of all, uh, this is the second take of everything because I usually had the, I had the blue screen up and then once I realized I had the word blue all over the place here and I got blue and blue, that that's not good for the blue screen. The whole reason I went blue screen is because, well, now these might look a little green, even though it's clear plastic, but it's yellow and green. So you might see, it might look totally black in here. So when I, switch to that this black background originally it was white background but when i switched to that instead of the barrel room which i might have implemented this time um you saw things went clear the the green screen trickery that i use it, it kind of the, the the bottles disappeared because a lot of this especially white wines look a little green anyway and then a lot of white wines are put in green glass with a brown background it didn't really it didn't really matter so anyway, so let's get started here. Oh, let's do this. So the day that this episode is being released um, is Eclipse Day in, the, in North America. And uh, I should be at Ron Yates Winery having a great time there, especially this, since it goes, these videos get released at noon on the release date. Uh, we should be 
highly anticipating the eclipse. Now I will say that uh, the weather may or may not cooperate. It helps to take the screw cap off. In, in, my, in my other life, my day job, I actually had a wine returned that the person attempted to use a, um, attempted to use an actual wine key on a screw cap. Um, it wasn't a pretty sight. I'd heard of this and I've joked about it with, with my fellow sommeliers, but I've never seen it actually done. So that was a little bit weird. Anyway, back to the eclipse, uh, the weather, um, been looking at the weather for the past 10, 11 ish days. And, uh, it's been sketchy touch and go actually for a lot of the country. Um, it might be cloudy and or rainy. And honestly, cause April, that's what April is. April showers bring May flowers. I mean, we're taught this in school. So there's a high amount of precipitation and or cloud cover that happens in April in the Northern hemisphere. So, um, Hopefully it's going to be okay. The, the weather forecast for Monday, for the day your, this is released, has been improving. I even checked it today. It's been getting better. So, And it's Thursday when I'm doing this, so let's see what happens. All right, let's get into this. Is the first is the Pinot Grigio. Just double checking, Pinot Grigio. Um, I mean, color-wise, it's actually a little bit darker. Um, and so, like I said, I mentioned about oxidation. And not that these wines looked oxidized, but that was a concern of mine. So I was like, well, plastic bottles, you know, blah, blah, blah. But with this uh, lining, this Psyox lining, I'm actually pretty excited. Also in, in the research, when they wash out bottles or plastics to make them, to get them ready for recycling, that Psyox la that layer gets washed away. I guess there's like a chemical wash that happens in the plastic to, you know, get out all anything that's residual. And so it, the, it dissolves, it dissolves at Psyox. So it's a little bit of a deeper color than I'm used to with Pinot Grigio. Um, usually it's, it's actually much clearer. Um, just looking at the, looking at the Sauvignon Blanc from this angle, it looks fine, but this is a little bit more yellow than more clear watery than I'm expecting. Um, I mean, it's 12.5%. I mean, the legs are doing 12.5%. All right, let's just go smell it. Fingers crossed, it's not oxidized. No oxidation detected, which is great. Uh, it's fresh. Um, green apple, kind of lime lemon. Um, I mean, Pinot Grigio is pretty neutral, and that's pretty much what you expect out of Pinot Grigio. Lime, lemon, apple, potentially pear. There's a joke within the psalm world, especially when you're doing blind tasting. Lemon, lime all the time. Apple pear, always there. Um, and that describes almost every white wine. And if that's the only thing you describe in your blind tasting at, at an exam level, guess what? You didn't describe the wine properly, unless it is Pinot Grigio or a couple other wines that are fairly neutral. No obvious oak. Um, matter of fact, I expect no oak on any of these wines because they're not even mentioned and that's not the purpose of them. So let's just get into it. Oh, I said, oh, so many YouTubers saying, let's get into it. And I just did it. Let's check it out. I mean, it's Pinot Grigio. It's light, refreshing, easy to drink, perfect porch pounder. It's got that citrusy thing going on. Um, it's got that, um, you know, lemony and lime thing. It's got a little bit of that tart green apple. This is a tart wine. It's not, it's not um, uh, like super, super like tart, like makes your, makes your mouth like, pucker up and all that kind of stuff, but it's a refreshing tartness. Um, there is ripeness of fruit going on here, but acidity is elevated um, as it should be. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't like fill the palate. It's not broad on the palate. It's very linear. It tastes good. I like it. It's, it's not a serious wine. It's not meant to be a serious wine. Um, there are some actually kind of serious Pinot Grigios or Pinot Gris in different parts of the world, but this is totally just like super enjoyable. Now, one of the things I do want to mention about the plastic stuff is what's really cool about this is you can bring this to the pool. You can bring this to the beach. You can bring this to the river if you want to float down the river, if you're in a state that, that they do that, like in Texas. And that's another huge benefit to plastic over glass. It's what I tout about aluminum cans, canned wine. But we have this kind of thing about you can't have 
you know, canned wine because there's this whole thing about beer in cans and it tastes metallic. I'm like, yes, yeah, because you put your tongue on the on the actual can. Don't put your tongue on the can. Put your lip on the can and drink it. You won't taste you won't taste any metal. Anyway, but if you're like so concerned about metal tasting stuff, then you pour it in a glass, or in this case, you pour it in a plastic glass. You know, these these plastic um, stemless glassware or a plastic beer mug if you're using beer. Perfect for these types of wines. So that's a huge advantage. And besides the recyclable, they're reusable. I mean, glass is reusable too. You don't have to throw out the glass, but if you're if you're going to use these things for wine, you could do it for these wines. And if you want to bring in something a little bit fancier, put it in the plastic glass. Just pour it. You're going to do it the day you're going to do it. So it's not going to get oxidized. Screw, and a screw cap is even better. So yeah, wine tastes great. I'm very happy with the wine. All right. And, and, and with this particular, like, is it is it like dramatically better than any other American Pinot Grigio? Probably not. But its advantage is it's in a plastic bottle. It's recyclable. We have we have a company that cares about the environment and all that. So you've got a lot of pluses here that would be like I would buy this one over some other uh, even just plastic uh, Pinot Grigio. I would buy this over any other ones only just because of everything else going on with the story. Stories sell wines. All right, on to Sauvignon Blanc. Now, when I pull it back this way, um, it has a little more yellow to it, but um, a little more green to it. But, um, you know, when you look at it this way, yes, yeah, there's a lot more green to this. And, and Sauvignon Blanc, I will get that from, all right? I'm not even worried about the legs because they're all gonna be 12.5% anyway. All right, so again, not oxidized, great. Um, it's got some classic Sauvignon Blanc aromas. So I've got a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of tropical fruit going on here. I don't get an overwhelming amount of grapefruit, which can be in Sauvignon Blanc. There's so many people that when they ask me about Sauvignon Blanc, they go, I don't like grapefruit. I'm like, well, unfortunately, grapefruit is something that you should expect in most Sauvignon Blancs, but not all. Depends on where they're coming from, but New Zealand for sure tends to have grapefruit. And then they go, but I like Kim Crawford. I'm like, hmm. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, like pretty classic, probably has grapefruit in it. You know, I get that. I, I, it, it happens. We, we don't describe what we like and don't like well enough. And then we tell somebody we like this, whether it's wine or some other food. And the person is super knowledgeable about that goes, yeah, the thing you don't like is that's in the food or in the beverage of some sort. But it's not like super aromatic, but it's, it's fairly aromatic. And these have been sitting out of the fridge for a good half hour-ish. So um, yeah, at least 30, almost 45 minutes now. So they've warmed up to a good temperature that's close to a serving temperature, right? I mean, I pulled them out as soon as I started setting up everything so that they did warm up. It's pleasant. It's easy drinking. It's more tropical fruit uh, driven. Acidity is really good. Um, it's guava papaya, mango. Really? Not, a little orange. It's, I feel like it's higher acidity. My mouth is really watering now. Um, and that's, that's one way to tell acidity. Sometimes acidity comes across as tartness or sharpness type of thing. Um, whereas if acidity is more of a balanced thing, it's not that it comes across acid-like. It just makes your mouth water a lot. And this one, I would imagine has a lower pH and potentially higher grams per liter of acidity. I, I, I know it doesn't really matter for these wines, but as a wine geek, I would love to have seen uh, at least that number, the acidity number on these wines, but it's just, they just give us the ABV. I would love that, you know, clarification, yes, done in stainless steel or concrete or whatever. Um, but I mean, at the, at the end of the day, these wines are not meant to be serious wines. They're meant to be good wines that are enjoyable in a recyclable or environmentally friendly process. So I know it sounds weird to say environmentally friendly in plastic, but plastic is environmentally friendly if used properly. With that said, it's very pleasant. It's easy to drink. It's, it's a good Sauvignon Blanc. I kind of want a little bit more. I want a little bit more than just it's mango papaya ish, you know, with a little bit of orange. Um, it's easy to drink. It'll go great on a hot summer day. It's perfect for the pool. It's perfect for 
the beach, perfect for the river, uh, perfect for your porch. Um, it tastes different than the Pinot Grigio, which is very critical, very crucial. If it tasted not much different than the Pinot Grigio, like, uh, then it's not varietally correct. But in many ways, the Pinot Grigio is more Pinot Grigio-like. And then the Sauvignon Blanc is, yeah, Sauvignon Blanc is pretty good. Um, it tastes better in general. Um, it tastes different. We'll put it that way. But yeah, it's, I mean, I, I enjoy it. And I'm going to enjoy the wine at later, you know, some other point in time later in the future. Also, with time, and it's already opening up a little bit more, as it warms up, as it gets more oxygen into it, it's going to be more expressive. I mean, keep it ice cold. Any wine ice cold is not going to be very, well, as expressive as it could be. So my Pinot Grigio tends to be very non-expressive, very neutral, especially the colder it gets. That's why I know it's an, I use this line over and over and over, but that's why Pinot Grigio, especially in this style, the Italian style, um, the, the quaffable style is like the Coors Light of wine. I mean, it doesn't taste like a whole lot because we drink Coors Light ice cold. Um, if you let Coors Light warm up, you probably shouldn't. I'll just leave it at that. But let's check this out. Been a few more minutes. Hmm. It's a little more expensive. There's more Pinot Grigio going on there. I find this wine actually, the Pinot Grigio, actually a little bit more interesting. Which is also kind of a contradiction, but I rag on Pinot Grigio, but honestly, I love Pinot Grigio because it's so just quaffable. But then when I get Pinot Grigios that have complexity and character, I'm like, all right, let's 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 rock on, you know? <laughs> they're both they're both fine wines. Um, they're, they're both okay. They're good. I would, I'm, I, they're appropriately priced. 15 bucks is perfect for these wines. You're getting some good quality out of it. They taste good. They are becoming more expressive as they warm up. And you've got a lot of positives going on here. So I highly recommend them. Um, so yeah, so let's, I'm excited to do the next two wines. That'll be next week's episode. Uh, so that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends and we'll see you next time. Maybe with some blue bin Pinot Grigio. Cheers. <laughs>